2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, breaking in at the third verse, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it says here, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Come on, y'all, y'all ready? <laughs> I want to preach from a subject this morning, conquering my mind. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, conquering my mind. We are in the series of where is God when times are hard, and I, I believe it's blessing us. Amen. Pastor Dave Early did an amazing job last Sunday as he broke down the story of Job. And some of you may have had a Job experience right now as you were worshiping in your situation, praising God in your situation. Amen. Mother Ann, we, 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 we understand that sometimes life is going to throw some things at us, but no matter what life throws at us, it ain't going to mute my praise. Come on, somebody. If I can't do nothing else, I can still thank them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but today we want to lift up, as the Holy Spirit has directed me, I want to lift up the, the, the aspect of the mind, the human mind. I'm no doctor, I'm no therapist, but I am a preacher. <laughs> and so I want to share what the Word of God talks about and what it speaks on concerning the mind. Uh, when you think of the mind, you ought to think of it as a steering wheel, right? Because your mind governs your life. You can't separate the results of your life from your mind. They're connected, for as a man thinketh, so is he, amen? And so you have to, as Joyce Meyer says, you have to think about what you think about. Mm -hmm. You have to think about what you think about. The mind is important uh, because it determines how you will respond to this thing called life. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it allows us to interpret, to form beliefs and make decisions about what we're going through. It also allows us and it determines how we respond to trials and tribulations. But what, what, what I'm talking about today is spiritual warfare because there's a difference between your brain and your mind. Your brain is the matter that's inside of your skull, but your mind is connected to your spirit. It's connected to your soul. I, I know each and every one of you have a brain, but I don't know how your mind thinks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your, your mind is your real you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you, when, when you're dating someone, you need to know that what their mind thinks. Yeah, they, 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 they may have all the curves or he may have all the s smooth words, but at the end of the day, what's, be what's between them ears is going to raise your children that y'all may have one day. <laughs> Well, where, where, where is your mind, amen? And your mind is kind of like software. It's, it's a lot like a computer where your mind is software, but your brain is the hardware. Yeah, yeah. And a computer uh, and a mind have a lot of similarities. They both process information. They both store and retrieve data. But they both have programs and codes that run them. See, when you're talking about a code, a, a computer has a code that's giving the computer instructions in how to perform. Yeah. Uh, uh, apps have a code that's giving the app instructions on how to, to, to perform. So every time you open that software or every time you open that app, it's going to do what the code tell it to do. Yeah. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, so, so what, what I, what I want to ask y'all this morning is, is what is your coding for suffering? Mm. Mm. 
How, how do you process trials and tribulations? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I understand today that you, 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 you have a cold, each, each and every one of us have a cold that has been affected uh, by our past, what we have been through, uh, what we have trusted God for. It's not all bad. We've had some situations where God has done some amazing things that have blown our mind. But the cold might need to be tweaked a little bit. Uh, might need an update. Come on, somebody. Uh, t today, your mind might get an update if you allow the Word of God to penetrate your heart. Uh, the reason why there are updates is so that the app or the software can operate as it's performed. Uh, come on, help me, Holy Spirit. And sometimes when you see yourself beneath your situation, when you see your situation getting the best of you, it's time for an update. <laughs> it's time, it's time to, to tweak some things. Am I talking to somebody in here? It's time to tweak some things because at the end of the day, there's a certain way you should perform because you are a child of God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeremiah, he, he, he had a virus every now and then. Jeremiah, the prophet in the Old Testament, he had, a, he had a virus in his cold because, I don't know, maybe you can relate to Jeremiah, but in Jeremiah 20, he said, yet curse the day I was born. He was going through so much suffering, he said, curse the manager who told my father, good news, you have a son. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He even said, I wish that my mother's womb was my grave. These are his exact words, but, but, but here, here is a man who was ordained before he was born. Mm. <laughs> I, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Can some of y'all sometimes admit you say some stuff that don't line up to what God has for you? That you get out of your hookup, that, that, that there are some things in your mind that shouldn't be because you, you need an update. <laughs> you, 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 you need some tweaking. You need some adjusting. And, and I'm here to tell you, as long as you are a servant of God, there's going to be some assignments where you're going to say, God, I wish you never would. <laughs> uh, I know some of y'all is so holy that you, oh, God, whatever you have me to do, Lord, I'm a God. that ain't my testimony. <laughs> It's been some moments where I can say, God, I, I, <laughs> I need a minute, okay? <laughs> I need a minute. I need, we we going to go back to prayer class. Let's talk. <laughs> let's, talk. <laughs> let's have a meeting <laughs> about my life. <laughs> because this is <laughs> it's not what I saw. Th th those are servant struggles because even in the midst of our grumbling and complaining, we still going to surrender. Where the servants at? We still going to submit. And every now and then you may feel like Jeremiah or sometimes you might feel like the Apostle Paul who after being imprisoned for ministry, it says around midnight in Acts 16, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. His coding was different. We all going to feel like Jeremiah sometimes and sometimes we're going to feel like Paul. And when you feel like Jeremiah, you need an update. You need an adjustment, amen? amen? But it's something that you have to do that the Holy Spirit will empower. Amen. Rick Warren says that neither God nor Satan controls your mind. Ooh. PJ, that is the truth. You are responsible for what goes on in your mind. And you want to govern it well because if it it's not governed well, you're going to go to a place you don't need to go mentally. A lot of people who have walked away from the church, it wasn't just because of what they felt. It's because of what they believed. Your beliefs override your emotions. <laughs> come on, come on, somebody. You, you got to have the right beliefs in place that even when your emotions are, are human, and they're real and they're raw, but when they are erroneous and out of God's will, they got to get checked by the truth of what you believe. Come on, somebody in here. And so your mind is the main battlefield where we have spiritual warfare. And that's the greatest battle you can fight is right here. Right here is your greatest battle. If you can conquer yourself, 
through the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to be all right. But if this is running out of control, you, 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 you ever see, you know, you got them, them new age parents? Y'all already know where I'm going. They just, they just let their toddler do whatever. And they're like, oh, he, he's, so, he's so cute. No, he's not. He's getting on my nerves, actually. And you need to use something called a belt. <laughs> it's a universal remote <laughs> that'll get all them kids together. You know that's what's wrong with this generation. They ain't had the belts we had. See, I didn't, I missed the time out here. I would have loved a couple timeouts. <laughs> Jay, I would have loved at least three. My parents was like, belt, 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 belt. <laughs> I was bad, though. I, I was, I was. But, but what, what, what I'm saying is that sometimes our minds are like a toddler with no discipline. And you just let it run and think whatever it want to think. You got to bring that thing in subjection. And you got to mature in your thinking. See, it's, it's understandable to see a toddler fall out because they don't have no other way to express themselves, but you're an adult. A.W. Tozer said, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. And I'm, I, I, I vividly remember reading that quote, and it struck me right to my core. Because I'm saying, Judah, do you really believe what you say you believe about God? And if you do, your response ought to be different. If you really believe that God is who we say he is, that he is Elohim, that he is El Shaddai, if you believe he's Jehovah Jireh, then there ought to be a certain behavior that you exhibit. And I think that thing struck me because at the end of the day, our response determines what's in our head. When we're going through suffering, when we're going through trial, and, 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 and listen, listen here, please hear me out. I'm not saying that you are to be a super Christian and never have a moment. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is there ought to be a but. There ought to be a pivot. But God. <laughs> I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with that, but I know God is able. So, and some of us, we've been walking with God too long. We done seen God too much to allow stinking thinking to have the final say. But, but it's your responsibility. I want you to hear these scriptures that I'm going to read. And if you need me to, to shout it out again, just holler back at me. That's okay. Uh, but, but I want you to hear these scriptures concerning the mind. Philippians 4 and 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. But you have to put your mind, meaning that you can put your mind on things that are not honest, that you can put your mind on things that are not worthy. It says, think. Put your mind on it. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, if, the, if, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which, where, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your affections means set your mind. Set, you have to do it. Uh, Romans 8, 5, and 6, Romans 8, 5, and 6, for, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You can't simultaneously have a carnal mind and a spiritual mind. You can't walk in faith and in doubt at the same time. Talk to me in here. You have to make a choice that either I'm going to have a spiritual mind or I'm going to have a carnal mind. 
and they both have their own fates. You determine which one you pick. Not God, not Satan, you. <laughs> Let's read one more. Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your, 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 your mind. Y'all see? The Holy Spirit don't set your mind on things. You have to do it. <laughs> Which lets me know, according to these scriptures, your problem is not the problem. Your mind is. Because, uh, Dickie Tyrone, if I can put my mind on the I am that I am, what problem can he not handle? <laughs> Matter of fact, if he don't remove the problem, but just give me strength to endure. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about what's in my mind. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is... Yeah. See, and what I love about what y'all are doing, y'all giving me the antivirus software. <laughs> y'all giving me the y'all giving me the, the, the antidote. But when you leave here, <laughs> this this is what this is what we, we call mental maintenance. Yeah. That we have to daily update our minds come on see I, I i have i am one i know that i'm a pastor and, and people know me and i i have spoken into lives of thousands glory to god no boast of my own i'm just a servant but some people may look at pastors and think we don't struggle <laughs> i was judah before i was ever pastor and see i've 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 battled depression long enough that I know where not to let my mind go now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I know what it's like to be depressed and still know the word of God. <laughs> yeah. Still be heavy, know all the antivirus stuff, and still heavy, it's like a, oh, help me Holy Ghost, because my God, it's like a weight sitting on your chest that you need Thor to come and remove, like nobody else can move it, but God is Thor. You know, I'm just metaphorically speaking, I'm not, but you understand what I'm saying? It's like a heaviness that I know it can be removed, but my mind. And, and I know how it feels to go too far into darkness, into thinking that's unhealthy because now the problem is not the problem. Now I got all this mess that I got this filter through my own personal justifications for being upset and being angry. I know what it feels like to just want to just, hey, this is it. I'm done. <laughs> Walk out on everybody. God bless you. <laughs> yep, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> and being a false peace about it, too. Like, oh, everything's fine. This is good. This is, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm done. But still knowing that that's not the will of God. Amen. 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 Here, here the, the apostle gives us some, some, some instructions for mental maintenance to conquer, to help us conquer our minds. And in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the 3rd verse, he says, For though we walk in the flesh, which, which is what I was just saying, we do not war after the flesh. He, he says, listen, I, I am as just as human as you are. But when it comes to fighting, I don't fight with the human means. I don't use this flesh. Uh, no, 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 no. Though we walk, though we live in this physical body, I, I, when it comes to warring, it's a spiritual fight. I can't use carnal ways. 
I can't use man's wisdom. I can't use influence. I can't use intelligence. There comes a point when I've got to walk in the spirit and I got to trust God to win this war, right? Uh, uh, for, for Ephesians 6, 12, and 13 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on t- unto you the whole armor of God, huh? that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand still, Stand in the power of his might. You have to put on spiritual artillery. Uh, he says here, uh, uh, there's three points I want to pull out from verse 4 to verse 5. We must use the right weapons. We must demolish opposing thoughts, and we must conquer every thought. Those are my three points. I don't know how this message is going to end, so I wanted to give them to you now. <laughs> Holy Ghost might shift something. Uh, but, but, but first, first we see here in verse 4, y'all still with me? Yeah. It says here, for the weapons. Meaning we have more than one. For the weapons of our warfare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Well, what, what, what would be our weapons? Prayer, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, faith in God, worship, fellowship, fasting. These are weapons that we can use to govern our minds. He says here, for the weapons of our what? Warfare. If you are a child of God, you are always in warfare. I don't care who you are, you're under attack whether you know it or not. Unless you're dancing and sleeping with the enemy, <laughs> there's always going to be opposition. Amen? This is the weapons of our warfare. The enemy in one of the first places he wants to attack is your mind. I, I, I remember talking to a young man. I, for a short stint, I was a coach at a middle school, and I remember telling the young man, if you get your head out the game, and you allow your opponent to get in your head. I cannot use your skill set because your skills are not accessible if your mind ain't right. I can't use what's valuable to our team if you constantly thinking about getting back at what that boy said to you. You got to keep your head in the game. I just told my daughter, she was talking about volleyball and what she want to do. And well, there's some things and some, op- some opposition. I said, baby, that ain't the problem. I said, it's about your mind. I said, if you have a mindset to grind and work, you'll get there. But if you feel like it's too much, it's over before it starts. And that's the first place. L- listen, listen, my basketball fans, Dennis Rodman was one of the greatest players to get in somebody's mind. Weird dude. Love him, but weird. Y'all yeah, watch Dennis Rodman. I don't, well, that's a whole other sermon. But, but, you know, Dennis Rodman was the type of dude, you know, at the free throw line, he just do this and just look at him. Just look. He just look at him and stare at him. He's getting in the head. And next play down, it, 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 technical on the other dude. Tech, out. Same, same, the same trick, same been doing the same thing. When you go back to the garden and the serpent is talking to Eve, she tells the serpent, we can't eat of that tree. But these are the other trees. He said, oh, are you sure that's what he said? You should not surely die. He just know that you would be like God, knowing good and evil. He twisted her mind. And once he twisted her mind, he could get her to do anything. Huh? Look, go over, go over, go over to chapter 11. Go over to chapter 11, 2 Corinthians, chapter chapter 11. Look at the third verse. The Apostle Paul addresses this. He says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds 
should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simplicity means singleness of heart or devotion. Satan knows that he just can't blatantly come and get us to uh, break our devotion with God, but he has to get in our minds. He has to harass us. He has to attack us. Ah, so why? And you think about it, that's such a st strategic move because where are your beliefs about God? Where's your image of God? Where's your understanding of God? So if I can get the core place where God resides and where you understand, and I, and I can get you to question this, this I am that I am, and I can get you to, to, to start to uh, uh, disassociate yourself and disengage yourself, and now you ain't going to church, now you ain't praying, now you ain't reading your word, it all started with your mind. <laughs> he says here, uh, uh, for the weapons, that's warfare, of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Stronghold. What are strongholds? Strongholds are thoughts that oppose the knowledge of God. And this ain't Satan, this you. <laughs> These are thoughts that you allow to take root in your mind that are not true. Help me, Holy Ghost. But thank God that through God, these strongholds can come down. Yeah. And I'm praying that as I'm preaching today, that you're getting an update as strongholds are coming down. Yeah. You're thinking about what you done thought about. And some of those thoughts, some of those justifications, some of those lies, and some of those excuses are coming down right now yeah. by the Spirit of God. He tells us in verse 5 that we have to demolish opposing thoughts. Casting down, that means to demolish, to destroy. Imaginations, that's arguments. And every high thing that, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Once again, that's what you have to do. You have to demolish anything that is not like God, that is not of God, that comes in your mind. You got to nip it in the bud, as my dad would say. Why? Because if you allow it to, 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 to sit, it'll fester and mutate into something else. You, you've got to demolish those lies. Uh, 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 bro brother, um, brother Elder Marcus Miller told me, if you hear a lie long enough, you'll start to believe it. Huh? Huh? I, I just, I, I just want to give you, give you some antivirus software because sometimes we say that ah, this is too much. But Romans 8, 18 says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Some of us may say, I, I can't do this again. But Jesus beheld them in Matthew 19, 26, and he said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God... Some of us may say, ah, I done made too many mistakes. I done messed up. God don't want me. God doesn't love me. But Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, for I am persuaded, and I'm going to read all of it too, that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. You've got to demolish those thoughts. You've got to take them across God's desk. they got to be father filter. What does God say about it first? Demolish them. There is no compromise. There is no alliance. No, there is no room. No, this is not the word of God. This is not what God says. Life is a mess. I, I ain't never going to be nothing. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that loved, love God and to them who are called according. You've got to demolish those thoughts. Don't let them fester. As soon as they come in, check that booger. You have to do it through the power of God. Why do you have to do this? Why is this so important? Because James 1 and 8 says, a double-minded man is unstable. 
And that word unstable means restless. To be double-minded is to say, God, I trust you in one breath, and the next breath say, God, I, I doubt you. And that, that can come by allowing certain things in, these viruses, <laughs> through sin, through sinful thoughts, through ungodly thoughts. We got to check our thought life, amen? amen. There cannot be no carnal rule in our spiritual minds. But we want to choose to be spiritually minded, which is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. That means if I'm carnally minded, I'm just bringing death into my life in some form. Whether it's death to my identity, death to my purpose, death to my faith, it's dying. But if I'm spiritually minded, I'm bringing life to my life. But I have to choose which one I'm going to set my mind on. That's where deliverance comes because then when you set your mind on the right thing, God, the Holy Spirit, comes down and empowers you. Once again, this is you don't demolish on your own. You don't pick the right weapons on your own. As verse 3 says, uh, verse 4 says, you're mighty through God. You never do it by yourself. Then as I get to my last point here, it says here that we are to conquer every thought. It says here, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I want to ask Brother Clarence McGee to come and help me. I just want to show you something real quick. But he says, and bringing into captivity every thought. Now, now, he tells us to demolish anything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. But here he tells us, Every thought that comes to your head, you got to take it to Christ. Come on, Brother Clarence. If you, if you could, if you could, um, just walk around for a little bit, and then I'm going to grab you. Okay. Yep, yep. And so, so this, this, y'all got to focus on me. Don't worry about. <laughs> we got to focus on me. I'm still preaching. <laughs> but ain't that how life is? When there's something you're supposed to be focused on, you got something else in your mind. He ain't got nothing good for you, so don't even. Huh? 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 He, he, he ain't gonna help you. I am. Stay right here. And that's, it's a choice. You can either pay attention to him or you can pay attention to me. It's a choice. You can be spiritually minded or carnal minded. <laughs> Because what I'm about to say, I'm about to give you life. That right there, I, 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 want him, I want him to represent a thought in my mind, which is insecurity. Yeah. See, I, I think some thoughts we can demolish, but some of them we have to capture. And see, just because you capture something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Did you hear what I said? There's some thoughts, you, you, that's why you got to be careful with your mind because there's some things you can't erase. Yeah. Yeah. So now you have to, as capture, cap, take captive, subdue. Yeah. And so through the power of the Holy Spirit, I have to go to I'm not enough. And I have to make it captive. Yeah. And now, walk with me, now, now I control through the power of God. I'm not going to let it roam and do what it want to do. It's not going to govern me. It's not going to control me. I'm going to control it. <laughs> so, so when insecurity rears its ugly head, I say, I, I, I can do all things through Christ. Let's go. Now, you got to say I'm wired a little different. So this, this is a little harder for me. I've had some, some mess-ups and some hang-ups. I've been told I wasn't enough. So I just can't demolish this one. But it ain't going to govern me. No, 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 no. Man, you know, you know, you know they know you ain't got no degree. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. What? And you know what else? I ain't going to hide them 
believe it. Y'all can see what I used to think. You can see it. This becomes my testimony, not my embarrassment. Every thought. Maybe it's that, uh, God, God, I can't do this. Take it captive. God, I'm not enough. Take it captive. Subdue it through the power of God and declare what God says over your situation, over your mind, over your life. Go ahead and get an update this morning. I dare you to get an update this morning. That through the power of God, the Apostle Paul lets us know that it's possible that we don't have to be controlled by our thoughts, but with the right, right weapons and the right mental maintenance. Because guess what? And I'm almost done. Guess what? I may have to do this tomorrow. I may wake up. Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> <sighs> You know the drill. <laughs> right? That's real, right? Help me preach. But this, but we, this is what I want you to see, that every time you take that thing captive, you get stronger in the spirit. That there may come a day you don't even have to worry about it no more. Like, no, I'm past that. I'm on the bigger and better things. But I know what God has created me for. And I take ownership of it. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much, Reverend Claire. We are not helpless victims to our thoughts. But we can choose through the power of God and how we respond. And why do we need to conquer our minds? Because in that storm, there's a blessing called growth. In that storm, there's a blessing called purpose. In that storm, there's a blessing called deliverance. In that storm, there's a blessing that may break a generational habit. Huh? And you don't want to miss what God is bringing that storm in your life to extract out of you. As I said in my last sermon, sometimes you just have to remain. You have to remain, and while you remain, there has to be some mental maintenance. But it all starts with your... And so as I, as I close this morning, I want you to grab somebody by the hand. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, if you don't want to, that's okay. I understand. Some folks don't like touchy touch. <laughs> but grab somebody by the hand, squeeze that hand. You're still here. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some of y'all done overcame suicide. Some of y'all done overcame depression. Y'all done been through low self-esteem, anxiety. You done been to therapy and the counselors, and you're still here. Squeeze that hand. By the grace of God, you're still here. That means you still have purpose. Hallelujah. That means you still have purpose. Regardless of your faults or your failures, regardless of your inconsistencies, God still has a plan for your life. Hey, glory. Glory to God. You almost let go, but you made it today. You're still here. Hey, glory. Now take a moment and pray for the hand you're holding. Pray for their mind. Take a moment and intercede for your brother or your sister that today those viruses will be exposed by the word of God, that today there will be deliverance, that they will get their update today. Hallelujah. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
have your way in this place, oh God, that we can have a sound mind. Yes, God. Have your way, oh God. Mm. That song you played at the end of it, that's good, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, God. Come on. Yes, God. Hallelujah. So I'm here today because God kept me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm a holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. God's mercy kept me. So I wouldn't. So I wouldn't let go. Let go. Ooh, I just think about what, what he brought me through. I felt like just couldn't take a life anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. My problems had me bound. What? Depression weighed me down. Hey! But God held me close. So I wouldn't let go. God's mercy? God's mercy kept me. So I wouldn't? So I wouldn't. Come on, testify. So I'm here. So I'm here today because God kept me. And I'm alive. I'm alive today. Yeah. Because of His God. Oh, He kept me. Yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, y'all sound good right there. He me. Hallelujah. God kept me. Say it again. Testify. He kept me. He kept me. God kept me. I felt like I couldn't go on. God kept me. God kept me. Da, da, da. He kept why? Me. Why did He keep you? So I wouldn't let go. Glory to God! Hallelujah! Thank you, God! Thank you, God! 